Sure. Can I start? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi guys, I'm Guo Jin. Uh, I work in Gojek in the data science team. So um, currently there's two teams in the Singapore team, um, the Singapore office. Um, data science and there's fraud. So Haibin is presenting later, he's from the fraud team. Yeah. So I'm going to do some shameless promotion about Gojek um, for, for starting. Um, so how many of you know about Gojek over here? Yeah. Oh, this is a lot. Okay. That's, that's amazing. Well, <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're like, uh, we're like uh, Uber for motorcycle. Um, at least it started like that. And um, we are, our main base of operation is in Indonesia. Um, then, you know, but we're into a lot of stuff. Um, we went to, you know, food and payments and yeah. So it's a great place for like anyone interested in data to work because it's like working in multiple company all at the same time. A lot of very challenging problem, yeah. Okay, so here's my agenda. So uh, introduction to promote Gojek. Um, yeah, and don't worry about the office size. So we are expanding and we'll be moving towards an even more spacious office. And yeah, and I'll be doing TensorFlow serving in Go. So I have to show some Python code. Uh, not sure if that's a crime over here. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is the, this is the, the picture of, whoa. Oh, technical difficulty. Yeah, so this is a picture of a redesign, um, the recent release redesign app. So yeah, we have a lot of services. Yeah. And yeah, you can, yeah, I mean, we stayed at uh, Indonesia for, for around a month and GoFood is pretty amazing over there. Yeah, so let me see. So a really cool company profile video. The sound isn't working. Oh. Change the output. Change the output. Change the output. Change the internal speakers. Huh? Okay. Now increase the volume. Yeah. Oh. It's really maximum. Okay. Yeah, I want to share at the end, but um, since I think people get pumped out over this, we are always hiring engineers. So, and we are pretty good on, in, uh, pretty big in Golang. So, yeah, if you're, if you're interested, just approach any of us. Yeah. yeah so, I guess it's something different. Um, yeah, if you want to follow along, you can just um, go to the repo, um, my GitHub account. I, I didn't upload to the to the company one because, um, yeah, you have odd issues. But um, yeah, you can just copy and. Um, there is a make file over there, so you can just make the environment um, directly and run the examples. So, um, some primal. So, what is TensorFlow? It's actually um, an open source, like, general ML library. Um, it's written in C++. Well, I'm saying a lot of language that's not Golang, but uh, forgive me. So, um, and um, Python is the, is the, is the biggest... Um, one of the biggest community that use um, TensorFlow. So they have interface for, you know, for Python code. 
but the underlying engine is written in C++ and it's also um, initiated by Google. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, what you can think about it is something very SQL-like. So you you basically tell them what you want, describe what you want, and the underlying engine build it for for you. So, but unlike unlike SQL, where you return a table, you know this thing it returns a, a graph, you know, um, define a graph. So over here is a very simple uh, linear model. Um, you define the variable is usually you know the weights that you want, um, the output that you want, um, eventually, and um, um, and you you put placeholders to be uh, a promise like. A promise to return a, a, a value um, at the end, and yeah, you have this linear model, say W multiplied by x plus b, so it's like m x plus c, yeah, linear model, yeah, um, yeah. Now, for more information, just visit the yeah, website. It's actually really good. I actually took the exact example over there. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, deploying TensorFlow model in Go. Um, so. The TensorFlow actually provide API to use in um, Go programs, um, but even in the official website, they say that you know all the training should be done you know maybe on Python or some other place. Then you just execute, um, yeah. Then you execute in Go. So you load pre uh, load train model and 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 do them in Go. But why would you do that? Um, so it, it actually depends. Um, as, as someone mentioned, Python versus Go, um, writing tests is slightly easier in Go because it's, it's a static type. You don't have to write so many. You don't have to think about so many conditions. Um, the, the Go test um, is pretty comprehensive. The built-in one, I think I just use Go with uh, an R library for assertion. And you know, writes off the package, there's even benchmark tests for it. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy to write tests. And, is in general, I think you feel slightly safer in uh, when you write Go test, uh, Go lang. Um, yeah, and it depends on your company support, right? So if your company, um, you know, have stronger support for Go, then you know maybe you wanna after training the model in Python, you wanna you know deploy it using Go, or maybe you're just a very hardcore fan. Um, yeah, and performance-wise, it's actually it's actually better. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, I will probably I'll walk through an example of like you know um, training writing a Python train model, then running it, um, serving it using Go. Um, so there's actually not much secret. Um, a lot of people shared several examples, but I look at I took a look at all the examples. They're still still a little bit complex. Um, they use the the NS examples. Um, so it's um, it's like the hello world for uh, for image rec. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna show the code for it. Uh. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody can tell this is Python. This is Go. Um, yeah, <laughs> so so we're gonna just uh, just train um, a, a very simple straight line, so a, a linear line that you know goes through forty five degree through the, the the origin. So you know, so oh, sorry, yeah, increase the font. Sure, sure. Uh, oopsie. Uh, maybe I'll start with the Python one. Is is this okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so yeah. So um, yeah, you start over here and define the placeholder. It's basically like variables. Um, then um, you start off with a weight. You can just set it so that right now I initialize it to be 0.3. Um, then uh, we define the loss. So um, since it's linear, you just define like a mean square error. So um, yeah. Then you run gradient descent. So if everybody confused, gradient descent is like a, a way to to minimize the loss. Um, is, you can imagine yourself like trying to get to the bottom of a hill, then you just you know travel at the the, the steepest route downwards. Yeah, but uh, there are a lot of like pros over here in the data science team, so just approach them for more questions. <laughs> yeah, but is everybody okay with this? Yeah, and you initialize and you initialize the session, then run it. Yeah, you run it and you know you do it a thousand times. You train it, then you save the model, and you serve it. And so the the only tricky thing is if you look at all the examples, they actually don't put the names. But over here, I, I name 
I need the, the input, I need you know, the predict function to be um, to add x, m, and c. So it's um, y, the, the thing that you're trying to predict is mx plus c. Yes, OK. So, high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK. Everybody OK, right? OK. Uh, yeah, so if you run the Python code, Yeah, so, so if everyone is trying to reproduce it, you can ignore, you can ignore this, um, this CPU support. Um, because, yeah, unless you, you, you want to optimize it for your particular CPU, then you really need to take note of it. Yeah. So you end up having this. It's basically um, serialized uh, binary files um, to load the model. But let's look at the Golang code first. So the linear model is a, is a binary package? No, they have binary file inside. It's not a binary package, yeah. Um, So that's the that's the model we're loading. Yeah, yeah. Import TensorFlow Go is pretty much all you need. Um, then you know that's the that's the model. Yeah, and that's the that's the tag that we gave to the model. Yeah, and and that's the operation. So I define input on the Python script. So here's the input, and I just make sure the match the name matches. So that's the only tricky thing about about running it in 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 our language. Yeah. And so I, I also I also declare an input. So this is the sample input that we, we are doing. So you know, let's say when x is four, so y would definitely be four too, since it's a it's a forty five degree straight line. Yeah. So and oh. yeah. Yeah. So. So y is 4.004. Yes. So if you run more iteration, then you, you, you're going to get closer to 4. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's actually it. So it's actually pretty simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just remember to label the operations. If not, you run into weird errors. And the errors are, the errors are not Golang errors. So it's quite difficult to debug them. Yeah. So just name everything. Make sure that you, when you operate them, you're calling the name. You should be able to do it. Um, so there's, there's like some quirks. So if you work on like more complex um, graph or you use estimators, um, it's actually not easy to, to load using Go. So yeah. So it depends on your project. Yeah. How is a model normally run? Oh, uh, what, what do you mean? In the absence of Go. Oh yeah, you. So, so that, yeah, I can, I can. Continue on that. Yeah, there's other other method to run the run the run the model. Yeah, so you can also use the in-house um, um, the open the open source this thing called TensorFlow Serving. So it's actually it's actually um, highly performance because it's written in C plus plus, and um, it just it runs a Java uh, PC service to serve the model. And I think I think a few months ago they, they couldn't serve multiple model, which is very useful if you are A/B testing your stuff. But right now I think someone made a pool, uh, a, uh, a PR and they can they can you can actually serve multiple models right now. And in Golang side you can just you know you can make a GR, uh, GRCP call to get a prediction, or you can just use um, their Python package um, to to make the call. But why would you still use Go? Um, so in our case, at least in our case. Um, you, so someone sent a request, you know, maybe we have to fetch some other data um, before we make the prediction. And you want a service that can handle that, right? So you may use Golang as an as a in-between, you know, between the request. Yeah. Okay. TensorFlow serving is uh, a Go, Go it's not, service no. or? No, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a Google, yeah. yeah. yeah I thought you said Golang. Oh, yeah, it's, it's made by, it's, it's open source. Service, but can you... Can you have that service running yeah, yeah, on-premise? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a library. It's so not a service. It's, yeah. yeah, it's not a service, it's a library. So you can just dockerize it and use okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So why not gRPC then? Yeah, this is actually possible. Yeah, but then, you know, if you can, it, it depends on your use case, right? Yeah, it depends on your use case. So if you have something simple, you could consider the Golang one. Right. If something is really like, you know, you want more support over it, then you can use this. And you want more complex graph, you might consider this one. Okay. 
TensorFlow serving. Okay. And how, how would you deploy a Python model? Oh, outside okay. Outside of Go, outside of TensorFlow serving. How would, yeah, how would deploy a Python model? How so, do you run inferences on a Python model? Oh, that's, that's, actually, easy. Yeah, that's actually easy. So it's, um, the, the, for Python, it's actually really easy. When you, um, in ten, you can just write the thing to, to, run the, to run the prediction itself inside the Python code. In Python? Yeah, in Python itself. Oh, but I think someone brought up uh, deploying Python. It's like, I, guess, I guess on our experience, deploying Python versus deploying Golang, yeah. I say the biggest difference is dependency management. Yes. Python dependency management is actually Nasty. pretty difficult to, um, yeah, to deploy. But yeah. Okay, that's it. Um, any, any questions? Thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. So it's going to be on the training part, which is in Python, and you're on the prediction side, which is in Cola. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you do the test or make sure you're using the same teacher space? Because like, you, you mentioned that you need to make sure that the name you use is correct. Yeah. But they are usually in different records, and maybe they by different people. How yeah. do you make sure? Yeah. So, yeah, you can yeah you can do integration tests. Um, and yeah, you can you can have the Python. So you train the model, but you also get a Python model to come out with the prediction. Then you get the Golang model that do, do the inference. And you you know you're gonna come out with a list of predictions, right? And you can generate like you know test cases and just run and see how fast they differ. Yeah, and that's. Yeah, they, in theory, they should be similar, but in practical, you run into a lot of issues, um, like sometimes decimal points rounding and all this stuff. Yeah, and, um, similar, yeah similar. similar. And that's, that's why it's difficult. Um, yeah, I, that's an excellent, ex excellent question. It's actually not easy to, to test models built in different language. Um, yeah, it's, it's, we, we, do have, we do face that problem, and, and I think, I think we, could, we could work a lot to make it um, to generalize that process too, yeah. Yeah, and another thing about this is like if you do an integration test and when you load the model, it's kind of dynamic loading in your goal line, right? Mm. So in production, if you, after you load the model, <coughs> yeah. you need to make sure the model you load is correct. And do you do another like, I'm not sure, another testing after you load this dynamically in production? Or you just do everything like pre-production? Um, yeah, that? you should you should do it. You, should do, you can do the testing in CI. Yeah. Yeah, but it depends, right? So maybe like you know, lesser test set for it. Yeah, but you should you should definitely test it. Yeah, um, a million things can go wrong. Yeah, testing the great great speech about testing. I think offloading complexity. But I think good unit test is uh, what allows us to sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> so GoCheck, would you run uh, an inference service? Would you write this as an inference service written in Go? Or yeah, as part of another binary, and just a function call. Uh, architectural I question. Actually. Okay, so I think I think at least at least for, for me, right, my next project, I will probably try to write it and go uh, the inference part because um, it, it it depends on a, a lot on um, who is calling the service. Mm -hmm. So if, if the if the latency requirement is really high, as in the latency required is really low, ah, um, then okay. you know you need high performance. Yeah, you need high latency. performance, and so. Even if, even if you read the binary file and serve using Go, it may not be as fast as TensorFlow serving. But you know, TensorFlow serving means that you have another layer. So it's, what you should do is after you write it, you profile it and see you know which is yeah, faster. Which is faster? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, any any questions? Oh, we're, we're hiring. Just just <laughs> restating that out. So yeah, a lot of like good questions and good problems. So we can solve them together. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I think that's it. Do you, do you run long long running servers in inference servers, or is it one of course? Um. Yeah. So. Have you shown you about it? At least for models, models, right? Um. You have to. They, they 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 might both steal right, so you 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 retrain them once in a while. So like long running means that I, I long running means the service running twenty four seven. Oh yeah yeah, until, yeah yeah until you you create a new model. Yeah 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 yeah. Any issues with resource leaks? Well, thankfully, not not that much. I think 
No, when we refresh the model, we usually do a complete redeploy. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but between refreshing the models, oh, they really last like a day. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> So daily yeah. updates. So yeah. okay, you, you can't tell whether it's a resource leak or not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So actually, yeah. So things from the like, infra team. So right. she would know better. <laughs> yeah, because I used to write Ruby backends, and I wasn't very careful and resource leaks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.